Hi, we're Tomorrow Lab, an invention studio focused on new hardware technology for big brands, agencies, and startups. We create prototypes and then turn them into market-ready, manufacturable products. On Potentially Genius, we take a Potentially Genius idea and turn it into a Potentially Genius thing using components from DigiKey's massive library. All while giving you a peek into our four-phase invention process. In this episode of Potentially Genius, we're going to meet with the team from Goliath. They pointed us to their free online platform, Goliath.io. Hey John, tell us more about Goliath and what we can do with it. Goliath is an IoT platform that helps product creators and engineers build connected products with their choice and flexibility of hardware and making it really easy to talk to the cloud. And so our kind of, uh, let's say, bounding function is, allowing you to work with the, the chips and the, and the connectivity options that best suit your product as a hardware engineer, as an electrical engineer, as a product creator, and then simplifying the cloud parts. So you don't have to actually stand up databases and servers and figure out all the parts that honestly are preventing you from building um, the device. I would love to see you all use Goliath um, in at least a couple of ways. Uh, obviously working with sensors and, and doing, measuring something interesting in the world. Um, using multiple devices, maybe multiple kinds of devices with different sensors, really that, that sort of mix of um, IoT-ness that helps create a product. Um, and then doing something interesting with the data, whether it's showing that to the user, building something um, with the data in a data pipeline or dashboard um, would really hit all the, the notes of Goliath. After speaking with the Goliath team, they challenged us to find a use case for their online platform with the particular intent of exploring its device settings management, remote procedure calls, and data logging capabilities. We brainstormed a few concepts. The first was environmental sensors for indoor building air quality. Another was usage and activity sensors for machine use time, like a laptop or a bandsaw. And another was presence detection sensors for securing indoor spaces. Ultimately, we decided to explore a sensor network that identifies and displays poor air quality sources in rooms or buildings. Using Goliath as the central hub, sensors can join or leave the network, reporting data for processing. Then, Goliath directs sensors to show colors, creating a dynamic air quality heat map device in the room. In order to prototype our idea, we need to order a couple things from DigiKey. A Wi-Fi board, a VOC sensor, a temperature and humidity sensor, a single NeoPixel LED, and a LiPo. Now that the components are on their way, I am starting to think about how everything's going to fit into a specific enclosure design. So we know that LED is going to be shooting light into a diffusion rod, so that's going to be on the bottom of a opaque enclosure, which will also hold the microcontroller and all the sensors. So maybe in that case, We'll also make a PCB that holds everything in place so it doesn't jiggle when you wave it around. So now we have this uh, mini microcontroller that we can fit into the enclosure. And this is a small humidity and temperature sensor. And then we'll, um, so if we add moisture, we'll see, we add moisture to this, we'll see this change from green to red. We make it dry, it should go back to green. Just a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's going to orange. There we go. Should we dry it out now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have like a blower heat gun here. Now that we have kind of the base circuit uh, running with the sensor and the LED, um, we want to figure out what the 3D printed enclosure looks like and how this whole thing assembles. We need an architecture that works for this. So I've just pulled these parts off the 3D printer. Our housing has to incorporate our light source, our connectivity, power, and our sensing all in one place. To do this, we're going to go with a tube and chassis design. The tube is going to mate with our clear tube, which is going to be our sort of light source in the product. And the chassis is going to hold all of the electronic components. We have our large LED that's going to fit through this hole here. We have our ESP32, which slides into the end here. We have our batteries, which is our power supply. It drops in like this. We're likely going to hold all of these things together with uh, some Kapton tape around the outside. But this is our basic 
chassis form factor. And this is going to slide into this tube with the USB-C port coming out this hole here. And then as this senses different things, depending on the mode that it's in, this LED will illuminate our tube here and create this beautiful glowing effect. To mate these two parts together, Jesse is going to cut a nice groove into this surface here and add some additional detail along the uh, length of it so that we have a really pretty display at the end. This was our first iterations of the PCB. As you can see right here, we were trying to create a, the commonly used half through holes on the edge for our microcontroller to be connected to this board. Uh, however, as you can see, this is with the limited real estate, um, harder to recreate and basically leaving as a little place to contact on the board. So with that, we came up with a solution where we basically created these flat contact beds, as you can see here, and our microcontroller essentially hugs the PCB like that. We programmed this board to actually just send the sensor data to Goliath. And now that we have that data in the cloud, we can manipulate and interpret that data in any way we want to. And the way we actually are deciding to interpret it is using an alarm mode or a heat map mode. So the difference between heat map mode and alarm mode is that alarm mode is supposed to be more of an alert. So whenever a sensor goes above a specific threshold value, we want to notify the user immediately and tell them exactly where it is. Versus the heat map mode, we want to just use these devices together, moving around the room to figure out where the hottest spot is for a specific sensor, whether the sensor be the temperature, the humidity, or the TVOC. So this is what the Goliath interface looks like, and this is where we can play around with the functions that we've already set up on our device. So the first one we have is the control NeoPixel color. And this is where we can control the NeoPixel color and also the frequency of it. So here I'm just going to say a value of uh, 255 for just the blue at a blinking rate of 500 milliseconds. So I'm going to call this method. And then, as you can see, it starts blinking blue at 500 milliseconds. So what we've just seen with Goliath is that we've been able to receive data and then also manipulate the device. Now we just got to figure out how to use Node Red to process the data that we've collected and call those remote procedure calls. I'm collecting data and it's spitting out the data from the Lightstream DB on the debug column so we can still see all the data coming in, the humidity, the temperature, and the TVOC. And we actually have these two triggers here, which connect directly to Goliath's our remote procedure calls. So we can turn the device blue when I press this button, and then off when I press this button. Now that we have Node-RED collecting data from Goliath and calling the remote procedure calls through Goliath, we just need to create the two logic states or the two logic modes for the alarm mode and heat map mode. Hey, welcome back, Chris and John. How have you been? Great, great. Thanks for having us back. Yeah, I like it. Awesome. Well, we've had a great time exploring the Goliath platform and discovering all the things we can build with it. We developed GlowGuards, a scalable sensor device system to identify sources of environmental issues like humidity, mold, TVOCs, or temperature. Using the Goliath platform, each node transmits sensor data to the cloud, which then sends back a heat map color to display on the devices, allowing real-time visualization of the issue source. In this demo, we're using temperature sensors to show a potential heat source in a room. Using a blowtorch, we heat up one of the sensors and see the LEDs across all sensors update to show which are detecting heat and which are not. That's heat map mode. Another mode allows the system to trigger an alarm if a sensor threshold is crossed. Now, while heat may be an obvious example, a moisture or TVOC sensor could indicate mysterious sources of poor air quality like mold, exhaust, or solder fumes. Chris and John, what do you think of our idea? This is awesome. Um, you know, the, the use of a sensor and the use of a, of a light, you know, these are kind of fundamentals for designing components. But it's really when you tie that to software and logic, 
and the kind of form factor, all that comes together, um, it's a useful, it's useful, right? It's not just a bunch of electronics anymore and a little bit of code. Um, and you know, we were talking earlier about all the applications, both um, practical and maybe uh, uh, impractical, where this kind of sensors can be, and, and it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I really love the on the like on site kind of uh, live heads up display kind of activity there, like the ability to do that. But then you kind of also focus in on the Goliath's capability to move off platform. So you're using Node Red and a webhook and pipelines and things like that. And that's something that we're really really excited about. I think you did a really great job of, of, of tying that all together. So is it potentially genius? Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to our friends at DigiKey. Please be sure to visit the DigiKey YouTube channel to see our past episodes.